There we go. Share screen with you. And so what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about a very special mathematician and his name was Aristotle. Now, he wasn't just a mathematician. He was also a great philosopher and an architect. And he was actually the teacher. Are you ready for this? He was the teacher of Alexander the Great. Oh boy, that's awesome, Aiden. So Alexander the Great was maybe one of the greatest military generals in, in the history of the world. And Aristotle was his teacher. Now, who was the teacher of Aristotle? Plato. I don't know if any of you remember that we have talked about Plato before. He was another great mathematician and philosopher. And, and Plato. And Plato was taught by a teacher named Socrates. So all of these great teachers had these amazing students, kind of like I have you guys. You are my wonderful, wonderful students. And imagine if I were a great teacher, maybe you could become the next Aristotle. But you know, Mr. Kramer's okay, right? So let's talk about what great teachers did. So Aristotle, he was studying numbers called chronic numbers. Can you guys say chronic, please? Chronic. chronic. And I'm gonna actually put a little rectangle around the word chronic. And chronic numbers are also known as oblong. Can you guys say oblong? Oblong. Oblong. And oblong numbers are numbers like this. I'm going to draw you guys a picture. So an oblong number is like looking at a rectangle that is a one by two rectangle. How many units is a one by two rectangle? One times two equals what, everybody? Four. Do you really think there's four squares there? Two. 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 two squares. Now, the next oblong number is gonna be? Four. 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 Don't call it out, please, because then the other guys don't get to do it. The next oblong number is going to be three times two. Don't call it out, please. Don't call it out. On three, you can say it. One, two, three, go. Six. And so the first oblong number is two. The second one is six. Now, if I ask you what was the next one, could you create me? the next oblong number. You know it's got to be four by three. Please do not call it out. If you have it, write it down. So if I call on you, and if you drew a four by three rectangle, that would give you the next oblong number. So who thinks they know or times three, or as you know, multiplication is repeated addition. Four plus four plus four, or three plus three plus three plus three. Raise your hand if you would like to take that question. You should just raise your hand like this. You don't even have to uh, use the raised hand because I've got an extra monitor. Roman. Can you give us the next oblong number? Go. Roman, you had raised your hand. Do you want to answer the question? Well, I couldn't hear you, Roman. Roman, are you ready to answer the question? Well, okay. 
Brandon, I'm going to go with you, buddy. I think it's 12. You guys all agree that it's 12? 12 is definitely the next oblong number. Now, let's write them down. The first oh, oblong number yeah. is 2. The next one was 6. Then we got 12. Now, I wonder what would happen if you look at 4 times 5. Could oh. count, guys? four times five, or the other thing I could do is I could create a grid. So I could do a four by five, a four by five rectangle, which is called an oblong rectangle. rectangle. And who wants to count by fives? Everybody, let's do it on three. One, two, three, go. Five. Come on. Okay. And guess what, guys? That's it. The next oblong number is 20. So everybody on page one, write down the first four oblong numbers. So they are two, which is one times two, six, which is two times three, 12, which is three times four, and 20, which is four times five. Now, who thinks that they could do the next one on their own? Please don't say it out loud. I kind of see the wheels moving, Declan. You may want to write it down. It may be easier. Raymond's got his pencil. I think Aaron is leaning forward, so he's working. Amelia, Signe, and Aiden, and Jeremy, and Brennan, and Roman. Roman's eating his pencil, but if you use it, that will be good, too. I'd love to hear what you have to say. On three, everybody. One, two, three, go. 30. Wow. Can we please count by fives to make sure you're right? Let's go, guys. Go. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty-five. And that is it. Six fives is thirty. Now, guys, the next one is going to be a little bit harder. So for six times seven, I'm actually going to do the same thing for you. I'm going to give you a grid and we're going to we're going to use a really cool method. At least I think it's a really cool method. And this is a 6 by 7 oblong rectangle. It is a six by seven oblong rectangle. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab five. Do you guys see that I just grabbed five? That's five. Let's count by fives, guys. Go. Five. 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 Okay. And? 15. 20. Twenty-five. Thirty. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Now, we've got 30. Now, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab another two fives. And let's keep going. After 30 comes. 45. And wait a minute. So that means that we've added on another 10. And who knows how much is left over? Two. Two. So, so what it's is seven times six? 42. 42. That is the next oblong number. So 42 is the sixth oblong number. 
Now the next one is seven times eight. And Mr. Kramer loves to create rectangles to multiply. So let's look at seven times eight. We're first gonna do eight that way. And I think that that's seven, I think it works. I'm gonna write out the dimensions. And now, would you guys like to count by fives, by twos, by eights, or by sevens? What do you think you'd like to do? Five. Signe, what would you like to do? Five. Okay, I like it. Let's do it together, guys. One, two, three, go. Five. Ten. Ten. Oh, okay, hold on a second. Everybody stop. Everybody stop. Not everybody is paying attention. Let's do it again as a team. We'll go. Five, five, 10, 10 15, 15, 20, 20, 20 25, 25, 30, 30 35, 30. wait a minute, 40, 45, 15, now don't anyone say it out loud. What do we have left over after 50? Go. 56. So we have a total of 56, which is seven times eight, and the seventh oblong number. Can you please all report that on your Aristotle page? 56. Now, the next one we're gonna do together also and I happen to love this one, which is eight times nine. And let's see if we can do the same thing. Mr. Kramer might have a little trouble. Let's see if I can find eight. No, that worked out. And then nine, I think I did it. So this time I have an idea. Are you guys ready for a crazy idea? Yes. Okay, we're actually gonna count by tens and then we're gonna subtract. Are you ready for this crazy idea? Yes. Here we go. Say 10. 10, 10, 10 20, 20, 30, 40, 50, Okay, now stop right there. We just counted 80. And I'm going to write that number down, of course, in purple. And now we are going to take away how many did we add that we need to take away. Go ahead, Amelia. How many? One. I mean, eight. We have to take yes. eight. Yes. And guys, if we take away eight from 80, it's... we can say what we have. Go ahead. Say it out loud. 72. 72. Did you guys like doing that? Counting by tens and then taking away eight ones? I love doing that. So 72, everybody write down the eighth oblong number is 72. And now who can just tell me, raise your hand, please. What is nine times 10? And don't say it out loud. I'm gonna call on Aaron this time. Go ahead, Aaron, you're uh, muted. 90. Yes. Did anybody else get that? Go like this if you got it. Go like this if you got it. 
Raymond, did you get it, buddy? Good. Now, the last one is 10 times 11. Who knows what 10 tens is? Brennan, do you know? Okay. And if we have 11 tens, isn't that just one more 10? And what's that going to be? 110. Wow. And so, guys, you could go on and on and on and do, what's the next oblong number? 11 times what? 12. 12. And then 12 times what? 13. And then what would be the next one if I had 100 times what? Uh, 101. Yeah. And then 101 times what? A hundred and two. Yeah. Or what about um, what about uh, uh, carrot? Wouldn't you just do carrot times carrot plus one. Okay, that's a little silly. Nobody's gonna be multiplying carrots times carrot plus one. So no, no laughing here. No laughing. Um, now. Are you guys ready for the next challenge? Yes. This was amazing. So Aristotle, wait a minute, hold on. Aristotle noticed something really cool. He noticed that, that if he took, let me see if I can find it. There we go. If he found the halfway point between two and six, he would find very special numbers. Who knows what is that halfway point between two and six? And I'm gonna write it out on a number line for you. And we're gonna just go like this and we're gonna go two, three, four, five, six. Which is the halfway point between two and six? On three, everybody. One, two, three, go. Four. four. Now, four. wait a minute. Do you know how special four is? How? Isn't four a two by two square? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So he noticed that in between every two consecutive oblong numbers is what's called a square number. So who can tell me the next square number between six and 12? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing between six and 12. Nobody call it out, please. Here's six, here's 12. And let's see, there's six in between. So I think this will get me there. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Who thinks they know the exact middle point between six and 12? On three. Say it out loud. One, two, three. Nine. Nine. Oh my gosh. Guess what you guys just found? You just found another beautiful square number. Isn't that amazing? A three by three square is nine. So you found another square number. Now, oh, I have an easy one for you. You ready for an easy one? Yes. What's the halfway point between 20 and 30? Ten. Oh, Five. Not ten. Say it out loud. Twenty-five. Is twenty-five, and that's the fifth square number. Now, who can tell me the halfway point between ninety and one hundred and ten? And Roman, can you take the pencil out of your mouth, please? I don't do pencils in mouths. They can be very dangerous. 
Um, I would like you guys to do the midpoint between 90 and 110. You can see it on three, one, two, three, go. 100. Which of course is 10 times 10. So it's a lot of fun to find these square numbers. And I even made a little chart of answers for you on my page two. So you can see all the square numbers that are in between those other numbers. Now, I want you guys to go to page three. Page three is one of my favorites because on page three, we get to actually build oblong numbers. We know that one times one, we know that that's a square number. Uh -huh. Two times two is four, that's a square number. Three times three is nine, that's a square. Four times four is 16, that's another square. Tw five times five is 25, but oblong numbers are different. Oblong numbers are different you always have to multiply a number by the next number. So one times two is? Come on guys, say it out loud. And three times two is? And four times three is? Well. And four times five is? And five times six is? 30. And that is correct. Now, would you guys like to try your own? Everybody go to page four right now and draw an oblong rectangle and make sure you tell me how many are there. So I want you to all draw an oblong rectangle. And if you drew one, do another one. And remember, you have to label it like Mr. Kramer. You label the dimensions and inside you can actually write the oblong number. And I want you to do like three or four oblong numbers and I will be right back. Either way, it's And I'm going to draw your rectangle and then you'll tell me the number. Who's going first? Brennan, you go first. Everybody else raise their hand when they're ready. Go, Brennan. 
Um, I did three times four. That is a beautiful oblong number. And can you tell me the value of that oblong number? Uh, what is a three by four? And who's going to give me the next one while Brennan's thinking? Okay, Signe, go for it. Um, I did 10 times four. Ooh, 10 times four is not going to give you oblong. It has to be four times five, nine times 10, 10 times 11. You have to, it, it, the numbers have to be one apart, Signe. So try that. Try to do another one. And who's going to go next? Aaron, go ahead. Unmute yourself and give me yours because I'm sure you've been working really hard. All right. Go ahead, Aaron. What, what, what did you create? So I created like a stacked equation, but that number times that number how many times? Yeah, but tell me um, what is the oblong number that you created? Just like Brennan gave me three times four, what are you going to give me? 11 times 10. Oh, beautiful. So I just did 10. Now I have to do 11. And I believe one, two, three, four. Yep. I think I did it. And can you tell me the value of that oblong, please? Aaron, what is that, buddy? What is 10 times 11? 110. Oh my gosh, beautiful job. And and Brennan, are you ready to give me yours? Uh, not yet. Okay, but do you remember, buddy, if we count by fours, four, eight, 12, three, nine, I'm sorry, three, six, nine, 12. So no matter what you do, three fours is gonna be 12. And Brennan, you can just count the squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You see how that works? Okay, who's going next? Declan, are you gonna go next? Jeremy, come on. Go guys. I did two by three. Say again? I did two by three. And who was that? Declan. Declan, what did you get for your two by three, buddy? Six. Oh, you are the man. Two by three gives us a big six. Jeremy. Go, Jeremy. I did six times seven. Oh, man. You, you chose one of the best. You chose really well. And when you did your six by seven, Jeremy, what'd you get? Mm, 42. Did you say 42? Yeah. Oh, man. I am excited. Who's going next? Amelia? Um, Signe, go for it. Um, I did 10, uh, 10 by 9. Ooh. Now, you know how I'm going to do the 10 by 9? I'm going to cheat a little bit here, and I'm going to use the 10 from Aaron's, and then I'm going to go down 9, and I think that that will work for me. So I've got 10 by nine. And what did you get for your oblong? 100. Well, 10 times 10 is definitely 100. But what oh, about 10 I mean, times nine? Say again? 90. 90. Awesome. OK, Amelia, you ready? And Aiden and Roman, go for it. And Raymond. Amelia, are you going to give me yours, honey? Well, I got three and four, and I counted by five, five, and two, because I saw that there was two fives, because I circled one five, then tried to find another five, then I found another five, then I did the five together is ten, then I saw there was two left, so it's twelve. Honey, that is a great explanation. How about you, Aiden? I can't even see you. I can see the very top of your head, which is great. But I love to see all of you. If you angle the computer down, you don't have to actually sit up straight. 
you should sit up straight, but if you don't want to, just angle the computer down and it works. How about you, Raymond? And how about you, uh, Roman? Roman, aren't you working? Roman, we're waiting for you. Are you going to give us your um, your number, your oblong number? Raymond, Aiden, come on, Aiden, you're right there. I know you can see me, and I know you can hear me. So, can... go ahead, Roman. Five. You have to say five by something else. Five. You have to say it louder, please. Five by two. Five by what? Two. Okay, so five by two is a beautiful rectangle, but it's not oblong because an oblong rectangle has to be a number by a number that's next to it. So you could do five by four or five by six. Which one do you want to do? Okay. So why don't you figure out what that is as an oblong number? And I'm going to take Aiden's right now. Go, Aiden. Three by two. Ooh, I like it. And we have one up, up here. What about you, Raymond? Waiting on you, Raymond. All right. Seven times eight. Oh, seven times eight. And Raymond, could you please do your video so I know where you are? Seven times eight. And what did you get, Raymond, for your seven by eight oblong? 56. Oh my gosh, nice job. And finally, Roman, did you get for us the six by five? Roman, were you able to get the six by five? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you're not gonna speak. You have to tell me so I know you can hear me. All right, thumbs down. Would anybody like to help him counting by fives? Let's do it as a team. Let's count by fives, guys. Go. Five, Five ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. That's right. So, guys, Romans was thirty. And that is beautiful. Now, one thing that you could do, guys, which is a lot of fun, because I gave you this extra paper, is you could create one like this. 30, 40, let's see, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Now watch this. I'm going to go 12, 18 and 19. Now guys, this is a crazy one. This one here is one of the largest ones you can do on this piece of paper, which is a 19 by 18. And that would be a lot of fun to do. And maybe if we have time, we'll come back and do that together as a team. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about are some of my favorite numbers. Can you guys go to page five, please? And Raymond, can you please let me know if you can hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so can you turn on the video so I know that you are with us? Because you always have your video on. So if you could just do that, I would appreciate it. And thank you. Raymond, I appreciate, oh, you're eating right now. Got it, don't worry about that. You're allowed to have snack if you want. Let's get going. Triangular numbers, guys, triangular numbers. If you draw a dot or a triangle around one, that's the first triangular number. Then the next one is three. And what's the next one, guys? What six. is that? that six. Is six. And what's the next one? Ten. Ten. Let me ask you a little question. 
what would happen, and I'm gonna just go here and clone this for a second. What would happen if I asked you to draw the next triangular number, a triangle, a triangular number with five? So five by five as a triangle, who thinks they know how big that would be? Yeah, Go ahead, Declan. 15. Wow. And can anybody tell me what would happen if we did a six by six triangle? <laughs> Because instead of adding five, we're now adding six. Who's going to come up with that one? Go ahead, Jeremy. And Signe, I can't see you. Aiden, I can't see you. Roman, I can't see you. And Declan, I can't see you. So if you could try to center yourself in the screen, then I know that I've got gotcha. you. All right. And who can add six to 15 to get the next triangular number? Who can do that? <laughs> Nobody's going to try to add six? Twenty-three. Well, that was a good try. 15 times eight is definitely 23. But 15 times six more is not, is Brennan? Go ahead. 20. Well, 15 times five is definitely 20. We've got to do 15 plus six, guys. Damon, I bet you know that if you if you just Four. concentrate it. 25, 25, 25. 25 is 10 more than 15. How about you, Aiden? How about you, Amelia? 15 plus six, guys. 15 plus six. Pretty. 21. It 21. is 21. 21. It is 21. So these are the first triangular numbers. Now, are you ready to see something amazing? Yeah. What happens if you take two triangular numbers and you squish them together? What happens when you take two triangular numbers? So one plus one, guys, what do we get? Two. And two is the first oblong number. Two is the first oblong number. So pretty cool. Now, what happens when we take the next triangular number and add two of those? What do you get 12. now? 12. Three plus three is 12? I don't no. think so. That's um, six. Guys, this is six. a two by three. This is a two by three oblong. And two by three oblong is six. Now, what if we take the triangular number six and we take two of those? Now, what oblong number do we get? Come on, guys, four by three, what do we get? Wow, wow. That's right. Four by three, and we get 12. That's pretty amazing. And lastly, what happens when we take 10 as a triangular number and add it to itself? What kind of an oblong do we get now? Go ahead, guys. Go ahead and say it. One day. Right. So we get a, a 20, which is a four by five oblong rectangle, which is made up of two triangular numbers.
So remember when Declan found the 15? What happens when we add two 15s? What would we get? 30. And that 30. is the next oblong number, 30. What happens when we add two 21s? What do we get? 42. 42. And guess what? 42, as you know, is the next oblong number. So 30 is five times six. 42 is six times seven. And the next one, which is going to be seven times eight, that could be found by taking the triangular number. You ready for this? 28 plus 28. Who can do 28 plus 28? Don't do it out loud, Amelia. Go for it. It's 56. Say again, Amelia. 56. And that was a beautiful job. Any question? Brennan, you had a question, buddy. Um, I, I, I had the same answer. Oh, great. Now, guys, the next one is going to be 36 plus 36. Who knows that one? Six plus six is what, everybody? That's 12. And three, three and one make what? Come on, you guys all know seven. three plus three plus one. That's seven. So seven. 72 is the next oblong number. Now, after that, we have 45 plus 45. Who knows what five plus five is? Ten. So we put down a zero. We carry the one in the tens column. Four plus four plus one is? 99. And that's the next one. Now we have 55 plus 55. Go ahead and add that up and raise your hand when you get it. And Raymond, you may want to put your, your food aside now and pick up your pencil. And that way you can actually do some work, which would be awesome. Signe, what'd you get? 110. Now, the next one, guys, is going to be 66 plus 66. Now, who can tell me what is 6 plus 6? 12. And what do we carry in the tens column? 1. one. And 6 plus 6 plus 1 is what? 13. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the oblong number 11 times 12. Pretty amazing. Now, you guys could do this all day long. Take your triangular numbers, double them, and that will give you the next oblong number. Now, I want to show you another little puzzle. And this puzzle is one of my favorites. Oh, by the way, I gave you a big, a big one to do big triangular numbers. You guys want to see the biggest triangular number I can find? Yes. Okay, here we go, guys. It might be too big. Um, oh my gosh. Now I think that this is 20 by 20, I believe that this triangular number is 200. Now, if that triangular number is 200, is that right? I don't think so. No, that's not going to be right. It's not going to be exactly 200. I'm going to have to think about this. So, we know that, you know what? I'm gonna put a big question mark here. And I want you guys to prove that 200 is not. So when you go to page seven, go to your page seven right now. 
I want you to look at that largest possible triangular number, which I do not believe is 200. And I would like for you to tell me what it actually is. Okay. And I'm actually going to try something here and let, I'm going to let you guys do that. Yep, so I figured out the size of that number and it's definitely not 200, but I would love to see if someone could figure it out for next week. All right, now I'm going to show you something really, really cool. We are going to combine square numbers and oblong numbers. Everybody go to page eight. On page eight, we have the square numbers. Who can do the square numbers first? Are you ready? Remember what we did. And I'm going to show you the square numbers again. They are right over here. Remember the square numbers? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. So we go to our square numbers. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Does anybody know the next one? Six sixes? And seven sevens? And eight eights? Nine nines? And ten tens? Now, who remembers, who remembers the second oblong number, two times three? Who remembers that? Does anybody want to say it out loud? Come on, guys. Two times three. You've got it. And that is six. Nice job. Three times four. That was Brennan's. Twelve. Oh, awesome. Four times five. Go. Twenty. Five times six. Thirty. <laughs> Wow. And six times seven, seven times eight. That was, I think that was Amelia's. Eight times nine. I think a bunch of you got that together. Nine times 10. I think that might have been, was that nine? Or oh, that was Aaron's. And then 10 times 11 is 110. Now, can anybody tell me? how to compare one and two. What do we have to add to one to get to two? What? One. What do we have to add to four to get to six? Two. two. What do we have to add to nine to get to 12? Eight. So guys, do you all see a pattern? Yes. What do we have to add from 16 to get to 20? <laughs> What do we have to add from 25 to get to 30? Five. Do you guys see a pattern now? Yes. All right, so can you guys finish this? Go all the way down to the bottom. So the difference between square numbers and oblong numbers are actually consecutive whole numbers, which is really, really cool. Are you guys all working it? I'll write it down too, but I assume that you guys are ahead of me. And, and one of the really fun things that I like to do with my older students, and I don't know if you guys like to do this, but I would ask my parents and I would say, mom and dad, can you give me a really big square number? 
and then try to figure out what that next oblong number would be. And it's really, really fun to do that. Now, the last thing I want to show you is a project that I did a few years ago. Are you ready? Yeah. If you notice, I'm going to show you two pictures. The first picture is actually, you see this right back here, that pyramid? Yes. Can you tell me what is the layer of tennis balls on the very top? Three by nine. Is that a three by three nine? Yes. That is a square number. What is the next group on the next level? Four by what? Four. And I what would four by four be? Well, well, that's four by three. What would four by four be? 16. Right. And guys, what we did was we stacked squares of tennis balls on top of each other to create pyramids. And then you're not going to believe this. This one right here, guys, that's not a square. What is it? A circle. It's a one by two. That's the first oblong number two. What's the next one? Three. It's a two by three, six. which is a six. Very good. Whoever said six is really on. The next one is a three by four. What's that, guys? Twelve. That is twelve. The next one is a four by five. What's that going to be? That is, come on, say it out loud. Four 20. By five. That's 20. And the next one is a five by six. Although I do have to apologize, one of the tennis balls fell out. But that was a five by six oblong. And who could tell me what five times six is? Say it out loud. 30. And that is 30. And guys, we went all the way down. I think the biggest oblong rectangle we were able to make, and I'm not sure if I can do this. Let's see. I'm going to use red. We, we did a nine. Hold on a second. Yeah, I believe we did a nine by 10. No, 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 it would be a nine by eight. Sorry, a nine by eight. And who remembers our nine by eight oblong? Who remembers that? Can anybody do that one, Jeremy? Wow. Unbelievable. Now, guys, if you have tennis balls, why don't you do the same thing? Now, the older kids, they're going to be adding up how many tennis balls it would take to make a square pyramid or to make an oblong pyramid. And you could do that as well. But it is so much fun. Aiden, go for it. What's your question? I use tennis balls to, and I stuck them on the fence, on a fence, and so it made my home room. Well, that is so cool. How many tennis balls do you have on the fence, Aiden? I don't remember. Yeah, Aiden, I think you should count them and see if you could make a beautiful oblong rectangle. Okay, so how many of you really enjoyed learning about my man Aristotle here? Okay, and, and I have to tell you, Aristotle, he was a pretty smart guy, but he wasn't right 
about everything. So he was wrong about gravity. And you're going to learn in science someday that the man who they believed knew everything actually never did a lot of testing. He never did experimentation. And I think for you guys, it would be great to see you experiment. How many of you think they, they can build a pyramid, an oblong pyramid or a square pyramid out of tennis balls or golf balls? Who thinks they can do that? I would like to see you try. For instance, if you had golf balls, okay, you could, these are dice, you could use golf balls starting with like a four by three and then a three by two and then a two by one and make a beautiful oblong pyramid. You will be very, very happy with your work. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to ask all of you to share what you learned with your parents and your friends and your teachers and practice, practice, practice. And I can't wait to see you next week. Everybody say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. 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 bye.